Hello, I'm Stacy Sherman of Doing CX Right, and I'm so excited to have Roxana on our show today to talk about customer experience and employee experience from her unique perspective. The goal of this show is to about humanizing business and having leaders really doing CX right, not just talking about it. So with that said, let me introduce you. Hello, Roxana, and share a little bit about who you are. Hi, my name is Roxana Saeed Carroll. I am a senior payroll administrator. Um, a little bit about myself. I was born and raised in New Jersey. I am South Indian, South Indian American. Um, I am also a little person. Um, not that I feel that it's something that would affect my line of work or anything that I do, but I've had experiences, um, good and bad, where it kind of did play a factor in some way. Um, I feel like being born different I was just more aware and always trying to be 10 steps ahead of the game to like be prepared of any situations that happen, whether good or bad. So working since 15, I can't even believe I've been working for almost 20 years. <laughs> I was just always somebody that just had to try. I wanted to like, if I wanted things that were like extra and was not necessary, my parents were like, okay, well, you're gonna have to work. You're gonna have to balance that. That's real life. And that's just always been my life, just moving, just, you know, trying different things and finding the best fit for me. Um, so my journey has been interesting. I, my first job, I was 15 years old. It was retail. Um, it was so crazy because I was catching the bus to go to work. Cause at that time, that's what you have to do when I, missed the bus and it's so funny because my mother still laughs about the story i missed the bus and my parents were at work and it was after school and i'm like how am i going to get to this job like i have to go to work <laughs> i caught a cab and i still to this day i don't know how i was like i just have to go would i catch a cab now i'm super scared but then <laughs> no fear i caught a cab went to work um retail was hard by the way, sorry, yes. now you'd get in an Uber driver, an Uber car. <laughs> and I don't even now, and I would never because I'm very scared. I don't know if it's because I watch a lot of Law & Order SVU. I'm just always like scared. I'm like, watch me be the one that gets kidnapped or something happens to me, so no. But I did it, I did it because I had to. Um, and that experience, my first job was actually, was a game changer for me. Um, my first time being in that kind of environment, working a little person, I was willing to do whatever I had to do to be good at my job. But I've had, cha I had challenges, things that people probably wouldn't imagine. Um, for example, we would have to punch in with the time card, like you stick it into the little machine and then you put it back on the, like the rack where everybody had their time cards. And there was other employees that would purposely put my time card in a place where I wouldn't be able to reach it. So then that would take me time. And I was like struggling because when you're home, right? Or in the comforts of your own space, everything is comfortable for you. Like you can pull a step stool or you can ask somebody for help. But there I'm like, I don't know these people. Like I'm not asking them for help. Like I have to figure out what I'm gonna do. So it got so out of control, like they th really thought they were being funny. Um, and I went to my manager because it was like, what more am I doing? Like I'm spending 10, 15 minutes when I should be working, trying to figure out how I'm gonna get this thing out when I'm, I'm early, I'm on time. Like nothing should be stopping me from working. So <laughs> it's so funny now I think about it because if it was the me then, I would be probably totally would be a war. Like I would just, yeah. So, all right. So let's, let's pause on that. So first of all, the manager, how did they react and, and support what you were saying? The manager, he was actually in shock. He's like, I, I, I can't believe like someone would like, there was no way of knowing who did it. Right. Because there was a whole bunch of employees and he, he had a meeting 
And he said, okay, like somebody obviously is trying to be cruel about this and moving her time card and putting in a place where she can't reach. So every time you guys want to do this, like that's how much overtime she's going to get for all the time it's going to take for us to, you know, help her to bring it down. So it was, and to me, you know, I was always raised like that no fuss type, like, my parents always gave me this mentality, like I'm the only child. So it was always like, listen, nobody's obligated to help you. Nobody's, there's no guarantee. Like your parents are your parents, but everybody's not, may not be like that, like care for you the same way. So don't think of it like that. It is what it is on to the next. Like, so that was always my mentality. I'm like, is, I'm like, I can't, my mom's like, you're 15, Roxana. It's not that serious. This is, a, this is a job you're doing to get the cell phone that you want. It's not, you know, so it, it was, they were always made it where it wasn't so serious to hurt me. Like always made it like, eh, it's fine. Like, don't worry about this. Mm. So it hurt, but then I just took it like, okay, I always feel like if you kind of show those cards to the wrong people. That's how they kind of take advantage of you and continue to thrive off of that. So I was just like, oh, okay, whatever. You know, I'm I'm gonna get the overtime. I'm just gonna move on and go back to my area to work. So, mm -hmm. you know, it stung, but things happen like that. It's that type of, you know, some places, it, you can't change everybody. Um, sometimes that's just the type of people that, happened to be at that place of business at that time, you know? That's true. I mean, yes, but the managers and leaders of companies do have control to make it yes. an easier experience and better experience for you, including, I mean, I don't know where the punch card was placed, right? Mm -hmm. Is it easy for you to reach or not? That's, that's a controllable factor. Right. Well, they were taking the card and placing it higher than I can reach the card that I'm supposed to use to punch in. So it's so I, I think I think my memory serves me that then he ended up moving it to a place for me to just be able to access myself. Yes. Now I'm thinking about it. And then no one was able to touch my card but me. So I think that was what ended up happening. Yeah. But he was very helpful. Like I'm big on living the life that I've lived, I'm big on not making people uncomfortable and making it so like, yeah, if it's serious issues, obviously, but I feel like I don't like that feeling of making people uncomfortable because I know the feeling of being uncomfortable. So it's like, I'm always just trying to say, okay, it's, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out. It's not, don't make me too much of the center of attention about these kind of things. I'd rather have no visibility and just do what I have to do in my job. You know what I mean? Like for that. I love that. Um, it's, it's treat you as if anybody, you're, anybody else. Anybody. Yeah. So that makes sense. And I love that your manager at the time took action. Yes. Because right? it took in a way guts for you to come and share Mm -hmm. you know, what is a physical and emotional experience. Yes. And it shouldn't have to be that way. Nobody trying to like, that's what I was saying. Like so, people that are different, regardless, your whole life, you don't want it to be battles. You don't have the time, especially I'm a mom. I have a five-year-old. My life, I'm, I'm living through her now. I don't have time to be picking. I have to pick my battles. I can't fight every thing tooth and nail because it's really might not even be worth my time. You know what I mean? Yes. That, that was one experience where that was my first job. And then how you mentioned, Stacey, how a manager has to play that role. I've had managers discriminate against me. I've had managers and it was an, it was an experience. It was a big company. And again, if I was me, probably the person me now would have been a whole nother story. It was for a, a retail, but it was for shoes. And this manager, I went through the interview process. The last step was interviewing with the district manager. And he looked at me and he said, you wouldn't be able to do this job. It was a mistake. Mm -hmm. And I said, how can you tell me what I can or cannot do? 
Okay, if I can't read, there's how many instances where there's people, even normal sized people that may not be able to reach something. So you ask for help, you use your tools, you find a way. Mm -hmm. And then again, it was my parents saying to me, Roxana, this is, this is nothing. You didn't study for this. You didn't, this is not your career. You didn't invest all your time and your knowledge into this. This is a job that you're doing after school. Do not give it this much power. You're not going to be a person that's in working in shoes. And I said, yeah, you're right. You know, I was like, okay, on to the next thing. Yeah. But that one hurt me because you're a woman, right? Sometimes, and I, I don't want, I don't know if this is sexist or anything like that. That's not even what I mean. Like women saying it to women kind of, or maybe a little bit more softening, like women kind of know how to like talk talk in a certain way, you know, where you're a little bit more comfortable, maybe. It was a man saying this to me and he's a district manager. No, you, no, 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 you can't do this. And I'm like, okay, so there's no point in me, art. like, what am I supposed to say to you? Like, I just was like, okay, well, that's a shame because you're telling me what I cannot, can or cannot do. That's fine. And I walked out of there. And the lady that interviewed me chased me. It was in the mall. She came behind me. She's crying. She's like, I'm so sorry. Like, I can't believe this happened. Like, what does your size have to do with this? And she's like, I'm so sorry you had to go through that. And I said, no, it's okay. I'm, I'm sorry. This was a waste of my time because I probably could have been somewhere else. Like, you know, so it was, it was always like um, that kind of mentality for me. Like, really? Like, I could have been doing something else. What? Yeah, but I also believe that each of these experiences have made you who you are today. Yes. And clearly you had, a, you know, parenting that was maybe a little tough love that, you know, you can do this. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's made you, you know, really a strong woman leader today. Um, but that you had to have gone through the bad to see what good looks like and that you can do differently and and help others do differently. Yes. Yeah, that's it's it's sad. I can I can spot it a mile away if someone is uncomfortable. Um I'm not mad at that. I just I always say you have to have an open mind. It doesn't matter what the setting is. At work you have to be prepared for all types of people, all types of attitudes. Um, there's some people that are grumpy every day and that's just their face. They're just grumpy. There's some people that are happy no matter what. Like, I just always felt like I can't make people feel awkward or I can't make them feel uncomfortable. So I'm just always welcoming with everything. I was just always like, come, like my house is your house. My desk area is your desk area. You have a question? Let's figure it out. And it's, it's how you talk and how you approach. Like, I feel like the approach is everything. Like it starts at hello. Like I can tell at someone's hello where this conversation's gonna go. Like it's I don't know what kind of sense that is, if it's some weird thing I have, but I'm like, oh, like I know where if you're making someone's differences the the topic and that's what you keep talking about, then I already know where this <laughs> where this is gonna end. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's, that's, it, it, I always say, even in customer experience, get the basics right, right? Yes. So yes. Even, even in relationships, get the basics right. Be authentic, be, keep it real, be transparent, um, be respectful, and employees appreciate it, employees feel more committed, mm -hmm. and customers see it and feel it too. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So customer experience for you. So you're a customer of many different brands as we all are. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a brand or a shopping experience that you've had that you could say that brand's really doing CX right? What does that mean for you? What has, what stands out? I, to me, it's always dialogue, right? Like we're, we're constantly learning. We are constantly networking. I like, I need to hear from you. I need to know your experience. I want to know where you come from. I want to know, how did you know this? Like one of my things is I'm obsessed with makeup. Like I love makeup. Makeup is my thing. Like I should have been probably a, a professional makeup artist for Hollywood. 
And to me, it's like, when somebody talks makeup to me, it's like, I wanna hear, I wanna know where you're going. I wanna know what methods you're using. And to me, it's like, why can't we build? Like, why can't we forget everything? Why can't we just learn from each other instead of, oh, this person doesn't know. Like, why do people get so annoyed when you can make this such a great dialogue about things? So I feel like talking, to the, the company I work for now, the best way I could explain it, we have a president that talks to us like he's family, right? So it's like, I'm intrigued. I wanna know what's, what are you eating for breakfast? I wanna know what are you doing? Because you talk like just like us, you know? And to me, that's comforting because you get it. It's like you were once one of those people, right? Regular workers or regular managers, you're a president. So you know the steps you took to get where you are now. Yeah. That's what I'm I'm interested in. I want to know what was your journey? Like how? That's amazing, you know? So to me it's like d please stop acting like all of a sudden you're in this position and you're just oh, you can't talk to me, you can't touch me, you know? I <laughs> No, connect to the people because the people are looking to hear that calm, that peace of mind, you know? Just like with presidents, whoever's, you know, the president of our country, whoever it is, when you're talking, I, my mouth, I want to be dropped. I want to be like, I cannot, like, you just gave me chills. Like, I'm going to go change in my life, read some books, because I feel even more inspired. Yeah. So that's what I always take away from experience. Like, I should feel the chills after I just learned something. Yes. Yeah, so connection is everything. And so going back to your makeup example, so I'm hearing you say, if you went to, let's say Sephora, mm -hmm. now the store, the brand is the people. Mm -hmm. really. Yes. So you walk in and you have somebody there who's talking you through the makeup, mm -hmm. giving you the background, helping really personalize the experience. You're going to love the brand. Uh, of course. Okay, versus you walk in and someone that, you know, just points you, you know, somewhere that isn't really uh, very helpful right. no, <laughs> to find no. what you're looking for. Right. Right. So that's where I would say um, that really makes sense. So every brand can really personalize and connect mm -hmm. to yeah. the customer. I take it with the simple thing as food. Me being South Indian, I need onions, I need spices, I need everything enhanced. So I'm the type of person who's at a restaurant saying, hey, can you add onions? Can you add this? And then if, dear God, if that does not turn out the way I just said, I am completely like, I I can't. I, I And I'm like, I just said all these things. Like, I really am telling you because this is what I want in this. And if you can't do it, just you should have told me that at the door that you could not change this. But to me, it's like that listening and understanding because we were all in those positions. We're all in the position where you're sitting at the restaurant, you might have an allergy, you might not eat a certain type of meat. So it's like, you have to understand, people tend to forget, Stacey, I feel like. People forget, like, do you not remember how you experience these things on a, on a regular basis, you know? Like, to me, I remember everything. If you take the time, and you're explaining things to me, or if you don't know, and you're gonna reference to something and get back to me, that's fine. You're thinking of me. You're still, you're just telling me you need more time. Opposed to saying, no, no, I don't know. I can't help you. Like, okay, goodbye. <laughs> I'm never coming back. <laughs> yes, well, I had an experience in a restaurant where um, the waiter dropped, I mean, I was wearing a white coat and there was oh, no. a whole lot of colored foods <laughs> on the plate. And it dropped on me, my jacket, all whatever, a mess. And what I noticed wasn't the food on my on me. What I noticed was that the waiter was very empathetic, apologetic, sincerely, mm -hmm. and was empowered to do what's right by me without having to ask permission from the up, uh, you know, bosses. Thank you. Mm -hmm. he made it right. So he gave me, um, a, a gave me his phone number he, and his email, and he said, please go get, bring it to the dry cleaner, email me the bill, we're going to take care of it. And then he did more than that. 
not only did he pay me back, but a week later he sent me um, gift certificates to come back to the restaurant. See. Right. So, so we need to empower employees to do what's right, you know, mm -hmm. all the time. I mean, obviously there's process and we have to follow process, but empower the employees too. You have to, you have to, have, you can't forget just that basic being kind and understanding and having empathy. I don't know how people forget that. Like, I, I like I mentioned to you, I have a five-year-old. I've, I've just always prepared her like, oh, you know, mommy's just small. Daddy's really tall. You know, I'll just, I'll just prepare her like that. And I've never told her anything about the outside world. Cause I'm like, she's only five. Like, I don't have to, you know, that's too much, too heavy to put into a five-year-old. Dear God, no one could even stare at me. My daughter's like, that's rude. That's my mom. You can't look at her. Like, why are you staring? I'm like, but, and people, and I feel bad because I'm like, okay, you have a five-year-old telling you you're not supposed to be doing these things. Like, you know, it shouldn't have to be that way, you know? And that's what I'm saying. It shouldn't have to be that way. It's a common thing and people tend to forget. Yes. That's what gets me so like, oh, how do you forget these things? Yeah, so, so as we're going to be closing, let me ask you a few quick things. So first yes. of all, March is National Women's Month, and I'm so happy to be sharing your story in this month. Yes. Um, what does woman leadership mean to you? Why is diversity and inclusion so important that companies focus on it and not just check a box? Oh, well, being a, a woman... It, working, wearing multiple hats. I mean, we always need a vacation from a vacation. I'm just always about building, learning, growing, and helping in any way I can. I'm just a type of person, I will help you. I, I will find a way. Because again, I know that feeling of not having the help you may need or maybe feeling uncomfortable or not sure about something. Um, women have to stick together. It's just because she wore a dress the other day that you thought would look better on you. Like you can't, you have to separate. This is about building. Nothing else matters. You're in that arena. You're going to win. You have to make it a win, you know? So that's what I like. I, I'm about, I, 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 I don't like dead weights. I don't feel like they help. You have to put in work to be great with your team. So I think that's so important. As women, it's it's hard. We're, like I said, we're, we're doing multiple things. It's hard to be focused and stay committed to that thing, but we get it done, right? And then with diversity and inclusion, I mean, look at me. What if they didn't hire me just because I'm small, just because I'm Indian, just because I'm a woman? Like that stinks. Like I come from so much experience. I, you know, why wouldn't you want to add me to your team to see what I can bring to the table? Yeah. So. And it's, and it's, again, it's not even the races, the religion. To me, that that's how we grow. We need to know where people are coming from and what their story is. Yes. Like, again, we should have chills. You know, why do you want it just everything to be the same? Regardless, like all just women, all just men, all just one nationality, that's boring. We need to look like, wow, like I'm going to go try your culture's food today because I never even knew this existed and I'm going to change my life. Like that's really. Yeah. And I also believe that um, we need um, leaders, not women leaders, men leaders, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'd like us to stop saying something before the word leaders. Let's Right. Right. We there's, leaders. Where there's leaders. No matter who it is. <laughs> whoever you are, and and there's plenty of room at the top. Thank you. Right. So right. to me, one day we need to be celebrating leaders without the special thing in front of the the adjective or the description beforehand. So it, it's it's sad to me that even still in 2021, it's still everything's divided. I don't have. My my daughter's mixed with African American. I'm South Indian. We don't even have this kind of dialogue. Like when people bring to me like that kind of stuff, I'm like, in this house we don't talk about division. Okay, like I make a joke all the time. She eats fried chicken. She eats curry chicken. She doesn't. She eats whatever she wants to eat and what she likes. 
there's no such thing because you're Indian, you have to do this because you're African American, you have to do this. You are you are mixed with two great races. And that's it. <laughs> like, you don't need to, you know what I mean? And that's what it should be everywhere. It, it should not even be a conversation. Oh, we have a little person here. Who cares? I'm still doing my job. It doesn't my height has not given me any extra pluses or cons. I'm doing my work from nine to five and I'm going home trying to squeeze in law and order as for you after my daughter goes to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's really my life. That's life, yes. And as far as food, honestly, it's taste buds. Our taste buds Thank have you. nothing to do. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It does not matter. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Like people read a book. It's not yeah. this serious to dissect every single thing appreciate it for what it is and have an open mind. Yes. If you have an open mind going into anything in life, you're good. Yes. That's all I always have to say. Yes. Like if you're closed minded, please don't talk to me because it's not going to work out. I agree. Um, all right. So my last question for you, if I had many CEOs in my room and all the big companies, mm -hmm. what would you want them to know? What would you say to them? that I am a person that's open to open to hear ideas, open to learn new things, willing to do whatever it takes for myself and everyone around me to be successful. Yes, I love that. And, and I know it to be true. And I would want those CEOs to know and those leaders that give everyone a fair chance. Yes. And that's what will make the world a better place because we spend so many hours at work mm -hmm. yeah. and we do know that when employees feel valued, yeah. important and appreciated, like I said, the customer feels it, they see it because we pay it forward. Absolutely. And, and, and another thing is I want to say, don't take a bad experience from one certain person or scenario and think everything's like that. It's absolutely not. And a lot of people do that well, just because they got into a fight or something happened at a previous job. So that's like me saying, oh, well, Stacy, I had bad experiences at these two jobs. So every job is going to be bad. That's not true. That's not true. And again, that's an open mind. Let that go and take the next experience for what it is. And if it doesn't work for you, you have control of that. If it doesn't work for you and you and, and you know what's going on around you and if it's not, if it can't be changed, or you see it's not getting better. As adults, we have the control to say, this isn't it for me. You know what I mean? Like, you you, you just can't take every experience and think it, it's like that. You have to try to either make it better, or if you don't have the control over it, you have to let it go. Really. Yes, but we also, and not but, and we also have the control to make things easier, a lower level of effort, as I like to say. So yes. if it's a punch card, put it in the right place, make it accessible, make it easy. Yes. Right? I know. So, I know. So that's just one perfect example of so many out there that these CEOs and leaders can do, and it's in their control. And you won't think about it until it happens. So then take the moment when it happens to make that the lesson learned. Yes, exactly. Well, yes. thank you for sharing. Oh, thank so, you. So openly and honestly, and I know from your story and, and many others about doing CX right, we're gonna make a difference. Absolutely, I'm here in any way to help. Oh. Thank you, have a wonderful night. Okay, bye-bye.